as we get into larger and larger complex programs, we'll often find ourselves needing to store some information in between the times that it runs. Now, when we're running an application, we store our values in variables, and that works great for us. But the problem with a variable is it's stored in RAM, or random access memory, and RAM is considered volatile memory. And that just means that when your application ends, whether it be because you turn off the computer or the application just got to a natural ending point and exited out, all that information is lost so it can be returned and used by other applications. So how do we deal with a problem where we need to store information in between times we run the application or maybe even over multiple days? Well, one common way is to store that information in a file. And we've used files all throughout our use of a computer whether it's in writing a Word document so we can turn it in a paper, or writing a simple text file that runs in a Python application. No matter what type of file we're going to use, and we're going to look at a couple in just a minute, the three basic steps of work with a file are the same in Python. And this makes it very easy to learn to work with that file and use it. The first step that we need to do is we need to open the file. Now, Sometimes we're going to open a file for reading data in, and that's using data we've imported from another application or maybe a previous time that we've ran this program. Or we'll need to open it for writing to a file, and that's when we're going to save information out so we can use it later, or maybe use it by a different application. The second thing we're going to have to do after we open it is we're going to process the file. And process the file is just a process of either reading in information or writing information to that file. And it works a little bit on the same way as writing information or reading information from the console and from the user. It's going to be very simple. You're going to find it very easy to do. Finally, and the last step, of course, is we need to close the file. This is kind of like if your mother ever told you if you open that door, you better close it. Well, in computers, if you open a file, you better close them. Now sometimes computer programs are smart enough to automatically close a file for you when you exit out of it. However, we don't want to take that risk. As soon as we're done processing a file, we should close that file. And it's just a matter of safety. Sometimes a file can get corrupted if it's left open and something happens like your computer crashes, someone trips on the power cord, or you closed it and the computer didn't do what you were hoping it would do. So we always have these three steps. We're going to open a file, and we have to choose where it's going to be for reading or writing, process, and close. And this doesn't matter regardless of what type of file. You might say, well, what do you mean what type of file? Well, there's actually two major types of files that we'll work with. One is called a text file. And text is encoded either via ASCII or maybe Unicode, and allows us to open it up in something like Notepad and allows us to look at the file and kind of read that information as there in plain text. We don't get a chance to highlight stuff or make different fonts or make something larger or insert an image. It's just plain text. It's very boring, but very, very useful, especially if a lot of the applications will be writing. Now, binary files are actually a lot more common, but they're a lot more complex to work with, and you have to know how that file is written. And binary files cover everything from MP3 audio files to MPEG movie files to Word documents, Excel documents, and zip files, and, and on and on and on it could go. Binary files have lots and lots of uses, but you have to know exactly how it's done because it's not encoded for us to be easily read. Instead, it's usually actually a little bit smaller and, and more manageable to work with, and we can do a lot more like store image about what a picture is going to look like or what that video is going to look like. In our class, we're going to be looking at mostly text files, just because they're easy to work with. And often you're going to see something referred to as a sequential file. And this is just a matter of how we're going to access our data. So text and sequential files is by far the easiest. You might think, well, what is a sequential file? Well, a sequential file means that you start at the beginning of the file and move sequentially or in order through that file. Think about reading a novel where you start on page one and you read page two and then page three and you go all the way till you get to the end. Now a direct access file or sometimes a 
called a random access file. It's going to be one where you can kind of skip around. And it doesn't matter what you read before or afterwards. Think about something like a dictionary. And if I need to go and look up a word, I can pull out a dictionary and I can skip to one section of the book. And it doesn't matter what came before it. I don't have to read about aardvarks and lions and penguins in order to read about zebras. I can skip right to the section I want. This makes it a little bit faster to work with because, especially if it's a large data set, I can bypass all the stuff I don't need. Unfortunately, once again, this is a little bit more complicated. And as a beginning class, we're going to not look at that in too much detail, focusing on learning the basics of how we're going to both read and write with our files.